Pretty Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting really to episode 21 of The Only Good Pretty Care. Let's go ahead and get started in 3, 2, 1, go. There is something I do want to say, kind of talk about um, our little Umi, but I'm going to wait until the opening to talk about it as much as I can. Oh, we're getting new stuff! Yay! <laughs> Me too, best girls. Oh my god. I know some people don't, and this is not me talking about what I really want to say. I know some people don't really like the fact that she has to transform with Latte. But it, it works. I mean, it's like when Muffin had to transform with um, Mirai and Rico uh, to transform. But then my best girl that show only had to use a fucking wand and that's why she was OP as fuck. I'm sorry. True, so... That's funny. I watch it on Saturday, and when this comes out, it'll be Sunday. But um, how, wait, Umi, Umi, Umi. Yeah, where is the goddess gonna sleep? You can't just stand out here. No! Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Well, one of you can make something up to your parents. Of course. Okay, I also got to pay attention because we're going to probably have new fish in the opening. Okay, I've been thinking about this ever since last week, and she kind of reminds me of another character for show that I'm currently watching right now. Um, it's Misfit of a Demon. <laughs> the Misfit of Demon King Academy. Um, Anos, the main character of that show, he, you know, body-wise, he is like, he's been reincarnated 2,000 years later. He, body-wise, he, he's older, an older, good-looking man. Mm -hmm. Good-looking man, like, just, just saying, because your girl was simping over that man. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's so funny because he was born <laughs> like, like, what a, a month, like a day year old ish, like that something. So it's kind of like that with her in a way, except it's different. I, I don't know. I mean, she's like, I would say she's real. She's older, like uh, mentally, but physically, she looks like she's, she's so pretty. Um, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. But she is the oldest out of the four girls. I mean, it makes the most sense because she a damn goddess. Uh, I'm just saying that to me. So, I mean, I don't know. I would like to see some scenes where the girls are being very, like, sweet and kind towards her. And she's going to be, like, a mother figure of this show. Oh, my God. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I can't. Let them rely on each other. That's what I want for the rest of the story. Like, really. please. That's all I want. Well, a catchy is no more mm -hmm. for a catchy. So he lasted like what ten episodes? Yeah. <laughs> 
Besides, can you even handle her, though? Exchange student. No, 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 no. Yeah. Even though it's gonna be super duper hard when the time comes and I hate thinking about it. Look at that oh my guy. That just reminds me. I need to do <laughs> feed my dog something. I need to feed his treat. I'll do that after I'm done. No! Cody, what are you doing? Come here. Do you want a fork? Mm hmm. Yeah, uh huh. There you go. Good. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Me with my dog when I first got him. You okay? I mean, yeah, all three of them are. They use most of their powers, if not all. I mean, they use, you just awoke him. Yeah. In a way, you don't really have to sleep. Mm
Então. Não? I honestly thought the girl was going to be today's, okay, that or, you know, Mel Kobayashi should have came because, <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious that a lot of people know that probably I have a crush on Mel Kobayashi in this show. I can't, I'm sorry. Hell, it was kind of the same thing when I watched, uh, what, print, not Princess, uh, when I did a reaction on, uh, Kitty Kitty Pretty Girl mode, and I had, like, the biggest crush on Akira. <laughs> Thank God you weren't hurt. Nobody wants you on my team. Ah. What's wrong? Oh. Nadoka, that's your hibiki talking. Oh my. <laughs> yeah. No, maybe, but... Mm -hmm. Look, you look at him. He's oh, he's so pretty. <laughs> oh, my God. And I see it. It makes me wonder if by episode 30, if they're going to get their new um, one and transformation attack.
Now, you know what this really makes me wonder? Let's go back to last week's episode and, you know, Best Girls Transformation and the budget on this show. It makes me wonder now, especially with the Sailor Moon movie, part one is supposed to come out, I think, next month, I believe. It makes you wonder how much they put in the transformation for that budget because since I have to wait probably a whole year to see the Sailor Moon Eternals movie part one, it's just, I think that's going to be the one thing, because as someone who still freaking loves Sailor Moon until this day, and who um, didn't like the first transformations to pfft, Sailor Moon Crystal. I mean, look how pretty it is! The fact that she still uses, like, latte, I feel like I'm watching a dog show. Oh my god. He practiced your puppy and they know the chick and everything. Oh my god. Oh yeah, we're finally getting their thing. That's pretty. I mean, she could just handle it by herself. What are you doing? Are you... She's going to be worried about her. I did so pretty as fuck. Well, that went 
well. <laughs> Cody, are you crying? Come here. Oh, hello, big boy. Hi. Yeah, she's very similar to Kirkazo in a way, except to the fact is she's not aggressive, though. But, I mean, the one thing is that I'm wondering about her. There are times where you see, yes, she is so fine with working with the three of them, but I feel like there's going to be more later on in the series where she may not want to work with them for, like, maybe one or two episodes and be like, okay, I want to kind of do something on her own. Um... Because we know how OP she is by herself. I mean, usually when the final cure comes in, and I don't want to say it for almost like every season, but I want to say from the show, each season that I've reacted to, so from Kitty Kitty Pretty Cure All the Vote up to Healing Good Pretty Cure, the final cure that comes into the group, usually they're a little bit standoffish, whether it's one girl who's coming in or it's two for um, Hug a Child. Um, they're a little standoffish. I don't think what, um, Emmy do? Emmy and Lulu? Lala? Emmy and Lala? Lala? I think it was Lala? Um, where, well, Lala was. <laughs> she sure was because, you know, her reason, because she was a bad guy first. Um, just a little standoffish. And so, I don't know, but she's getting along with him and she's learning the path of teamwork and the value of teamwork and being together as a team. So I hope that there is an episode where she doesn't really want to say, Hey, I want to do something by myself. Yes. She's very protective over latte. I totally get that. Anyone who really loves an animal. Oh God. Um, or a pet family member, whatever. You're very, very protective of them no matter what. It's kind of like, almost like, even when you have a newborn baby, you are very protective of that newborn baby. As someone who doesn't have a kid, but I know how that feels from seeing on TV shows and my friends who have babies right now. Some of them, not all of them. Um, some parents, some single moms or parents together, especially the mothers, are very, you know, like, I don't want anybody to put their hands on my baby because I don't know what you touch. I don't know if you washed your hand, yada, 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 yada. I gotta protect her, make her nice and clean, this is this, don't touch my baby. And I'm not saying that she's like that, but she is very, in a way, going to be protective of Latte. And to her, Latte is her baby. Latte comes first, no matter what, at the end of the day. So if there's a moment where, hey, these girls might get into an argument because of something, and <laughs> Latte, you know, mm, get sick because of a mega view again, you know, no matter what, all four of these girls are going to stop their argument, maybe, um, to solve it. If it was Aoyuki as Hibiki from Simple Gear, mmm, that's a whole different situation. I mean, yeah. So, you haven't got to see Simple Gear? Go watch Simple Gear and then come back. But, I mean, I still love her. She's just, only she's just like a, an adorable little thing. And, oh, <laughs> it's just, she's so cute. I, I can't, you can't help but to love her and how her and Cosmo are very similar with the fact is when they come to a new place and <laughs> they don't know anything and they're trying to use like silverware and how to eat certain things and you're like, oh, wait, you need to do like this. I really thought that like Nadoka would have told her parents that, oh, hey, Umi is an exchange student and so, um, I, you know, I... <laughs> 
I volunteered our home for her to stay. Can she stay here? But the fact is that she's like, no, this is, oh, you know, this is Latte's actual owner, yada, yada. I think this is a really a nice idea. And even with her mom saying, oh, yeah, we're not ready to say goodbye to Latte yet. And I'm just over here. I'm like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like, yeah, you know, that's going to be a really hard episode because <sighs> I don't want to see her go. That's a, I don't want to see Latte go. I mean, yeah, as much as we're not even there yet, and we have, like, a, a little long while, and the biggest thing is hoping, is this going to end by January? With the pace that we're kind of going, maybe, yes, maybe, like, mid-January, February? J no, the end of, like, the second week of February, I believe. Um, maybe. That's all I can really truly say about that. But the day when the final episode of this season comes, and we have to say goodbye to this dog. Like, you already know I'm going to be a hot mess. Like, the the last time I was this, like, I, I was a hot mess for Pretty Care and saying goodbye, I think, was it last season? No. I don't think it was. He, it, it was Star Trek or Pretty Care. I think it was, um, Hugato. Yeah. Saying goodbye to the baby. Or, uh, Cure Tomorrow, like, say, say yeah, say goodbye to her, because, like, oh my god, because, um, what the heck was her, oh, shoot, I don't even remember her name, oh my god, um, Cure Yell was so in love with her, and wanting to become a mommy, and an older sister type, <laughs> with a baby, and stuff like that, and so you really felt how she felt at that time, so it was even harder for me as a viewer, because I fell in love with the baby as well, because I was like, oh my god, like, she's so freaking cute, like, I kind of want to have a baby, um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's that exact same thing, except it's with an animal, and so I think it'll be a lot more harder for me, because I've had to do it once with both of my dogs passing away, and the fact that I'm gonna have to do it again, it's just gonna hurt, so when that day comes, just know that, like, <laughs> I will be crying my ass off, even though I'm laughing about it now. I think the day when it does come, I will literally be, like, a hot mess. And honestly, I think that'll be a very good day for me just to cry and let it all out. Maybe you guys will cry. I don't know. because <laughs> I, I don't know everybody's opinion on this show and how everyone, their connections and their emotions with the show. And I would love to ask someone that one day and how they really, truly feel about when they watch this show. Or any other show. Do you get emotional or an emotional connection when you're watching something like Pretty Cure or um, any other S type of a show that comes out for anime, whether it's a character getting killed off or something? Do you get emotionally attached to that character and do you feel really sad, upset, guilty, um, whatever feeling that you feel when someone has to leave or die or whatever? That's the biggest thing. But other than that, guys, that was my reaction feature. It's episode 21 of Healing Good Pretty Care. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the National Squad. And, of course, I will see you guys officially next Saturday, Sunday, for episode 22. Bye, guys.